Hi everyone, this is Ravi Krishna Jamiwala. Welcome to my channel Ravi Tech Talks. Please do like and subscribe to get notifications. Let us start with our course Microsoft Azure IoT. So today we'll look at uh, what are the different protocols available for us on Azure IoT Hub uh, while configuring a physical device. And uh, we'll discuss on different uh, options on using these protocols and uh, network considerations. So these are the protocols which are available for us on uh, Azure IoT Hub, uh, AMQT, Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, MQTT, Message Queue Telemetry Transport Protocol, and uh, HTTPS. Uh, we also have MQ, AMQT over uh, WebSockets and uh, MQTT over WebSocket. We will look at uh, in what scenarios uh, we will uh, go for WebSockets. So coming to AMQP, MQTT, and HTTPS, so these are the ports uh, which are required for uh, those protocols uh, to be used. And uh, coming to AMQP, if you are uh, having multiple devices connecting over a single TLS connection, and if you want to perform uh, device identity, then AMQP is, a, uh, is the perfect protocol for you. And uh, AMQP and MQTT it also supports uh, publish subscribe. And uh, MQTT only supports a single device uh, identity over uh, TLS connection, even HTTPS. And uh, both AMQP and MQTT, they both support uh, binary protocol. That is uh, the message, whatever you are sending, it goes in binary format. So it will have a lesser footprint. Whereas HTTPS, it takes in, uh, in uh, text format ASCII, so uh, the message size will be bigger. And uh, AMQP requires uh, more memory, whereas uh, MQTT requires smaller memory. And even HTTPS requires a smaller memory. So these are the protocols. Uh, now let us see uh, different types of devices, what we normally encounter. So we have three different uh, types of devices. Uh, one is cloud or field gateway. So these gateways are nothing but uh, there might be multiple devices uh, which are collecting data, but they cannot directly talk to an IH or IoT hub. Okay. So in those scenarios, they will connect to the cloud or field gateway and that gateway will in turn communicate uh, with the Azure IoT Hub. So as you can see, field uh, or cloud gateways, they don't have any constraints. They are basically edge devices, or they can be a servers on which edge, uh, uh, edge uh, software is installed. So they have no constraints. They are higher power, high memory, high CPU. They can connect to IoT Hub. Uh, they support IoT SDK. They provide IoT Hub access to multiple devices. Okay. Then there are constrained devices. So these are low power device, uh, low memory, uh, and uh, low uh, CPU uh, utilization. And uh, these can connect to IoT Hub and have support to IoT Hub. And uh, these only support uh, supports only single device uh, identity. Okay. Then offline devices. Uh, so these devices are mostly offline. They come online at a particular interval that might be once in a day or uh, not once in any every, in every hour or so, they might come online and they might, they might send data. Uh, they might have limited memory, limited connectivity, and they might not support uh, the IoT Hub SDK. Okay. So, so as we discussed previously, the cloud and uh, field gateways, uh, based on uh, their uh, Based on the constraints they have, it is uh, it is good to use AMQP protocol for cloud or field level gateways because you are, you can perform multi device uh, identity and authentication over the same TLS connection. You have published subscribe and you have a uh, no constraints over here. So and uh, coming to the constrained devices uh, where uh, you can only do single device uh, authentication per connection and uh, you will have a limited uh, CPU and uh, limited uh, memory, it's better to go with uh, MQTT. And uh, where you have offline devices, it is better to go with HTTPS. Okay. And uh, then coming to the network considerations, uh, we have firewall uh, connectivity medium and uh, communication latency. So, again, uh, let us say uh, we are ha having a corporate firewall. Most of the time previously when we have seen, we have seen that I IoT devices can directly communicate with Azure IoT Hub, but 
most of the practical scenarios the iot devices might be behind an corporate firewall so when it is behind a firewall not every port might be allowed so as you seen previously in our pre uh, previous slides amqp and mqtt have particular port numbers which need to be allowed in case uh, for communicating over uh, these protocols okay. so if your corporate uh, firewall is allowing those protocols uh, then you can pick those uh, protocols uh, if it is not allowing those ports Specifically, then it is better to go with the 443, which is the HTTPS. Most of the corporate uh, firewalls uh, they allow inbound 443. So, if you don't want to go with HTTPS and if you want to go with MQTT, all in that scenario and 443 is enabled, then it is good to go with MQTT over WebSocket. Okay? When you are going with MQTT over uh, web socket it supports uh, 443 it will be uh, supporting on 443 port okay and uh, even amqp over web socket it is supported on 443 port so since most of the corporate firewalls uh, do allow inbound with 443 it is good to go with amqp with uh, uh, over web socket or uh, mqtt over web socket or https in those scenarios okay and then connect, coming to the connectivity medium so if uh, if your iot device is uh, sending out a large data or if it is sending uh, the data uh, very frequently then it is better to choose a particular uh, network uh, either it can be lan or wi-fi but if it is uh, if you don't have uh, such a connectivity of a wi-fi or a lan then it is better to go with a cellular network but again when you are going with a cellular network it is better to reduce the amount of data what you are sending from iot device to iot hub so that as the data is uh, less over the cellular it can uh, it can be much more effective okay again communication latency so let us say your device is collecting data and it is sending a real time and in some scenarios you are having the offline devices or low power devices and they sending data over uh, one hour or two hours or it might be collecting data and sending it uh, once in every 24 hours or so so in those scenarios it is uh, good to have an iot edge because in some of the scenarios you might want to raise alerts or you, you might want to raise notifications at the uh, factory level or the industry level before that data gets into azure iot hub and uh, it uh, throws a red flag at the azure iot hub level so if you want to have such a control it is better to have iot edge uh, logic implemented at, uh, after the device level so that uh, if you want to throw some alerts at the factory level uh, saying that uh, some parameter or some machine need to be uh, adjusted or based on some value some machine need to be turned off or uh, some sort of uh, preventive measure if you want to trigger then it is good to have an iot edge sort of an implementation based on your communication uh, latency whether uh, how much time it is taking uh, whether you are sending real time or if you are sending even in real time also you cannot send real time there might be few it will it will be few seconds or minutes off okay so hope you have understood uh, what are the different protocols available on Azure IoT Hub and uh, what are the different considerations uh, we take. Please uh, let me know in the comments if you have any uh, doubts related to this topic. Have a nice day.